This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this section we're going to look at some of the main transformations that you can do to objects and that's moving, scaling and rotating them. And I've set up a simple scene with a cube in the middle just for demonstration purposes. So if I click on the cube, that's now selected and you can immediately see that there are arrows available to move the object and if you move the cursor over one of those arrows you can see that it changes to a cross and then you can just drag the object in that particular direction moving it on one axis at a time and the axes are color coded so that the red corresponds to the X axis within the Carrera universe the Y is the green and the Z is the blue but you can also move it around in two dimensions at once. If I just grab it not on one of the arrows, then I can move it around in two dimensions. Now this is a good opportunity to introduce the working box. And the working box is the grid that surrounds the object that you can see here. This will help you place the object within 3D space. But it also allows you to do some of the operations as well. You can see that the cube here is projected onto the walls, as it were, of the working box. And you can actually use these projections to move the object around. And again, you've got two dimensions that you can move that in, so you can move it up backwards and forwards. And the grid there can help you actually move if you want to measure the move. The grid here is set to feet at the moment on a medium-sized scene. You can always change the size of the grid. If we go to view grid, then you can see that the spacing is set to one foot. The size is 30 feet in each direction. And if we select snap to grid, then we'll see that rather than having a smooth movement as we had before, it will now snap to each grid position. And that can help with lining up objects or placing them accurately. I'll just take that off again for now. If you have a look at the working box icon here, you can see that the floor is highlighted, which means that we can move the object in two dimensions, dragging it round on the X and Y axis. But if we select one of the other working planes, then here we're selecting it on the X and the Z axis. And here on the Y and Z axis. So you can select which plane is active for dragging the object around. And obviously you can use different camera views as well to help position your object. If any of the planes of the working box get in the way, particularly in a complicated scene, then you can actually switch them on and off and those options are available here. So you can just choose to show whichever particular grid you find is useful if that particular option is useful to you. So those are the move options. If we now look at the scale options you can see that the arrows have now changed to boxes and we can scale in one particular direction keeping the center of the object in the same place using those box handles there. If you want to scale the whole object proportionally, if you go to a corner of the bounding box, which is the box that appears around a particular object, then you can scale it all proportionately. And if you select an edge, then you can scale the object in just two dimensions. In this case, we're keeping the width the same. So you can see you can scale it however you like. And obviously you can create a lot of different kind of shapes from the basic primitives just using those scaling options. Another way to scale proportionately is to press the shift key with one of the handles and that will scale the whole object proportionately using the object handles here. And the third main transformation that you can do is to rotate. And we click on rotate and we can see again we have the red circle 
corresponds to the red axis, so it's rotating about that axis this time. The green for the Y axis. And the blue for the Z axis. And again, we can also rotate using one of the projections as well, if that's useful to you. You'll notice on this that there is also a circle in yellow around the whole object and that if we move the view around then that stays a circle parallel to the view that we have and that's sometimes useful to rotate at right angles to the camera. An additional option on rotate is to use the shift key which then rather than having a smooth rotation will rotate in 45 degree steps. So if I press the shift key now and then try to rotate, it will flick between 45 degree and then 90 degree angles. And that's just using the shift key. So again, you can make some accurate moves. You can actually change in the preferences the angle that you get on holding the shift key. But 45 is a good general solution. So those are the three main transformations of any object. You can actually select this manipulator, which is the universal manipulator, and you've then got all three transformations available in one tool. So by clicking on the right part, you can move, scale, and rotate, all with the same tool. can get a bit fiddly, so I sometimes use that, but quite often I use the individual tools. And the final thing is a keyboard shortcut. So if I go back to the Move tool, and we can see that we can move that around fairly freely. We'll just select that so that it moves it. There we go. Then by pressing R and holding it down, we can then access rotation. But it only exists while you hold down that key. As soon as you release that key, you're back to the tool that you had selected before. And you can use S for scale. And if we had one of the other tools selected, then we can rotate that. And it's T for move. M is used for something else. So T is the option for that. If you just think translate, posh term for move. So those are the main manipulations of an object. And you should be very familiar with them because you'll be using them all the time.